So I don't know if you've seen my video on circle music. It's the one in which you've got circles, tracing circles, tracing circles. And the idea is that you map the distance from the center to the outermost circle and translate that to pitch. Anyway, apparently this video inspired a viewer called R.C. Jack H. R.C. Jack. R.C. J. F. Anyway, whatever his name is, he made a plugin based on circle music. Let's do a quick and in no way confusing overview of the key features. So here's the plugin in operation. Circle settings. Yeah, there you go. You can see you're changing the size of the circles. Staccato or legato. You can change the scale. You can change how it approaches repeated notes. Make sense? Hopefully that was 100% clear. Anyway, he built some cool stuff into this thing. Let's wipe the slate clean and try building something from the ground up. So the first thing that you need to know, and I know this will be disappointing to some of you, is that this only works in Reaper, the digital audio workstation. Um, it's not a VST. It doesn't work in other DAWs like Logic or Pro Tools. But that's partly why I'm making this video, because if we all shower him with enough positive feedback, maybe he'll make a VST out of it. Anyway, if you do have Reaper and you want to try following along yourself, you need to install the Repack repository. It's kind of a package manager for Reaper. If you don't have it, you should have it anyway. And then what you need to do is manage repositories and add this GitHub link. Once you do that, you should be able to add the circles. Wait, circle, and there it is, circular note generator. Now, if we start it, we're not gonna hear anything because this is a MIDI plugin. So it doesn't actually do the sound production, it just sends MIDI notes. So if we wanna actually hear something, we need to add a VSTI, and I'm gonna use Piano Tech, my default go-to. Whoa! Okay. And that's the first kind of strange thing that I noticed about this plugin is it doesn't seem to have a way of controlling volume. At least I didn't find a way of controlling volume. So I'm gonna to add to the chain some sort of velocity. Here we go. MIDI velocity control. I'm gonna throw this in between the circular note generator and piano tech, and let's just multiply the volume by negative 0.5. Why is that even a setting? 0.5, and let's take a listen now. Okay, that's much better. So if you're in the business of making circle music, the first thing that you need to know is how to make new circles. And so what we got here is we've got this circle settings. We can move between the different circles. And this dot right here controls how big a circle is and how fast it moves. So I'll go back to the first circle. If I wanna make it bigger, I do this. If I wanna make it smaller, I do this. And if I move it up here, we're gonna start moving faster and faster around that middle circle. Now I'll go to the next circle. Maybe make this one a smaller circle. Maybe make it move a little faster. And then the outer circle. And then if we want to add one more circle after this, we just hit the plus button. We can do... Okay, it took me a little while to get those settings figured out. I think it's because the whole thing is always scaled down to fit within this box here. And so sometimes when you make a circle bigger, what it's really doing is making the other circle smaller, which I found really confusing. But at the same time, I can't think of a better way of doing it. Now, one thing you might notice is that this outer circle, all it's doing is controlling when the notes happen because the trigger mode is zero degrees. So when it's zero degrees on the outer circle, it triggers a note. We can change this to be in hertz, so four hertz to zero hertz. Just real quick, I really wish that the maximum number of hertz was way more than four hertz, but that's the way it is. We can also change it to a certain number of milliseconds. Again, it can't get very fast this way. And then we can click, and now we can do it in quarter notes. We can make it 128th note. That's starting to get fast enough that it's doing something interesting. So for me, when you turn up the trigger fast like this, this is actually where it starts to get interesting. This is because you need the sample rate, meaning how often you play a note, to be relatively fast compared with the speed at which the circles are moving. So if I were to suggest some improvements on this, I think one thing is I would make the circles slower or the notes faster so that you can really feel the circular motion. Anyway, there's lots of other good stuff that you build into this. As I said, you can change the scale. You can change how it approaches repeated notes. This allows repeated notes. This removes repeated notes, which is kind of interesting. It gives it a rhythmic feel. And the alter version just makes the notes wiggle to avoid repeats. Anyway, you can make it more legato or more staccato. And I have a feeling that maybe if we were to make the first circle a little bit bigger, that's faster, bigger. Yeah, all my circles were too small. That's the problem. Let's make the circles bigger.
Okay, now we're starting to get somewhere. Now, as a final step, I'm gonna add some extra MIDI plugins in here. So let's see what else we got here. Uh, velocity and timing humanize. Let's throw that in because it's a little bit too machine gunny. A little bit of timing humanization, a lot of velocity humanization. And let's see how that sounds. And now you see of getting a range of velocities in piano tech. It's a little bit more interesting. Let's see what it sounds like with the pedal down. It's really great turning the pedal on and off. I mean, I think if there's one criticism that I have, I really wish that you could control more than just the pitches with the circles. Like, it'd be great to control the pedal, but if not the pedal, it'd be great to at least control note velocity with the circles. Still, there are other MIDI plugins we can add, and maybe I'll play with a few of those and add some of them. Okay, I love the effect of adding a quarterizer here with really short notes. And I really like, by the way, this scale settings, the way that you can turn on and off scale degrees. The other thing I tried is if I make the notes long and add an arpeggiator, then you can make it sound really, truly awful. One last thing that I tried the other day is over here. So I added a kind of random LFO to the trigger mode over here. So it goes through faster, slower notes. And that made it sound a lot more interesting to me. It had this kind of circular feeling of speeding up and slowing down. Anyway, I just wish that you could control that with the circles themselves. Maybe have the tempo or velocity be based on the circular motion. But hey, look, this is something that someone made based on a video I made. They made it open source and freely available. So what we need to do is encourage this guy. Heck, that's why I'm making this video. RC Jack H, keep it up. Oh, hey, what's this? Bonus content? Have you ever encountered music like this and wondered, what the heck? Like, what's going on with all of these tuplets inside of tuplets inside of tuplets? Well, this is a piece by the famously complicated composer Brian Fernihow. And a composition student of mine has gotten really into this kind of music. Hey, Nick. Anyway, he inspired me to write some code that renders a Fernihow-style rhythm tree to a list of durations, like this. So why am I showing you this? Well, I'm teaching an advanced workshop on composing music in Python in a couple weeks. I don't do the advanced workshops quite so often, so if you're interested, definitely sign up. I also offer one or two diversity scholarships and other financial aid where possible. Anyway, the link to sign up will be in the description, and I hope to see you there.